Hi everyone and welcome back for the fourth and last lecture of module one. Uh, we have already reviewed together the complex and interwin crises uh, we are facing, as well as the origin, the understanding, interpretations and application of the concept of sustainability. Now we're going to go more into depth into sustainable transition theory and experiences. This lecture is inspired from the theoretical and practical collective work to which Asud have collaborated in the last years and which is contained in the book Riconversione Ecologica Utopia Concreta, meaning in English Ecological Conversion, a Concrete Utopia, edited by Asud and published in 2015 by EDS. In this last lecture, we will uh, first have an introduction to Alex Lander and sustainable conversion theories and theorists. So you will have the chance to meet with our terrorist friends, Hillich, Commoner, Gord, Sachs and company. Um, we will also see some key elements for an, ele for an ecological transition of the economy. And finally, we will conclude these lectures with some good practices from Italy. We have already mentioned Alex Langer in the previous lectures of this module. He was an Italian journalist, writer and politician, and he was among the leaders of the European Greens at the European Parliament in the late 80s. In the 80s, Alexander Langer introduced in the public debate a proposal for an ecological transition of the economy. Since 84, from trade unions convention to more elaborated writings, he developed an articulate theory foreseeing the environmental, economic, militant, social and spiritual aspects of the transitions proposal. Retaking the Italian words and perspective developed by Langer, we will speak in this lecture of ecological conversion of the economy as an equivalent to ecological transition. The perspective of ecological converting the economy did not come out of the blue. It has arisen from many and various intellectual thoughts, like the ones of Ivan Illich, an Austrian writer, historian, philosopher and pedagogue, from Barry Commoner, a US leading ecologist, biologist and politician, or André Gortz, a French journalist and philosopher, among one of the founder of political ecology discipline, the Romanian economist Nicolas georgescu Rogen, founder of the ecological economics discipline and precursor of the degrowth perspective with its minimal bioeconomics program, and Wolfgang Sachs, a German social scientist in the field of ecology and globalization, who is part of the Wuppertal Institute. In his article, Justice, Peace and the Protection of the Creation, Thesis on the Political Practicality of Ecological Conversion, in Italian, Giustizia, Pace, Salvaguarda del Creato, Tesi sulla tuabilità politica di una conversione ecologica, an article that is actually a speech from 1989, later turned into an article, Langer defines ecological conversion as responding to the necessity to prevent humanity's suicide and to secure future life on Earth and coexistence of all living beings. He said, he had rather using this terminology based on a dimension of repentance, deep consciousness and the reparation of damages than the ones of revolution, reform or restructuration. He added that the concept of conversion is also implying the need for personal and existential change. Actually, Langer chose the word conversion to evoke a path, a change of path orientation, like the Jewish verb shuv referred to in the Old Testament, or behavior in self-mutation, mentality change. Already in 1992, Langer sustained that to accept positively today the need to limit excessiveness, to step forward for progressive degrowth and positive idea of austerity as a lifestyle compatible with sustainable well-being, we have to accept first that is not a diminution but an, enri an enrichment of vitality and self-determination. Georgescu Rogen also calls to abandon fashion, luxury and disposable economy. He proposed a minimal bioeconomic program identifying eight action pillars for a change in Western society that would guarantee the long-term survival of humanity. So what are these eight action pillars? He first uh, asked, pro proposed to stop war instruments production. Uh, being societies aiming to peace, they should not build and produce um, weapons. Two, there would 
imply to change the system to increase the welfare of the less developed countries. Also, it would be needed to decrease the population. He also focused on energy efficiency and solar energy. He also listed among his eight pillars the renouncement of excessive wealth, the durability of products, so making products reparable and usable for a long time frame in order not to use too much resources, to get rid of fashion, and finally to finish with the second drum of the shaving machine. So it's really it's a very interesting uh, concept and, and words. So when he speaks about the second drum of shaving machine, what does he imply? Actually, he uses the image of one's shaving quickly to have more time to design a razor able to shave more quickly, to have more time to design a razor able to shave more quickly, and this infinitely. This is an image, of course, to represent our society and to give the idea that uh, we are running every day more and more without giving space to what is more important. And to remember that an individual conversion is at the basis of a real detachment from the promises of growth. Many theorists underline as Langer the need of individual changes in the path toward transition. For Georgescu, Rogen, changing habits and mentality is a key factor in ecological conversion and considered an economic process product, not just a physical flow of materials and energy needed for production, but rather the enjoyment of life that it produces at the condition, of course, of having free time to spend intelligently. Hillich was going in the same direction when in 1973 in his book Tools for Conviviality, he said that the solution to the ecological crisis lied in the fact that men should be happier working together and taking care of each other. But of course, ecological conversion proposal cannot be based only on individual changes. Langer emphasizes a lot on the public policies and political and economical decision implications that should, in his perspective, on one side, swift from short to long period perspective to improve the entire cycle of decision making, that is to say, to program, build, regulate, direct and invest, but also to take into account in evaluation processes all interested parties, including present and future generations, as well as ecosystem, and also not to transfer ecological debt payment to the less advantage would be the poor uh, or the global south, the future generation or the biosphere, and to internalize environmental costs. Hi everyone and welcome back for the fourth and last lecture of module one. Uh, we have already reviewed together the complex and interwin crises uh, we are facing, as well as the origin, the understanding, interpretations and application of the concept of sustainability. Now, we're going to go more into depth into sustainable transition theory and experiences. So we get to the question, who are the actors of change? So it would not be just the individuals, although if it's from some of them that changes occur. Actors of change shall be organizations, collective actors, starting with the institution. We can reduce uncertainties, which are typical of transition phases, and help to better define future scenarios of redefinition of costs, benefits, opportunities, and risks. We can say that institutionalized knowledge guides individual and collective behavior and builds sense to provide solution to complex issues. Institution represents the rules of a given society and relationship between people. In that sense, they can incentive change, would that be political, social or economical. Going towards ecological conversion cannot be limited to changing rules or value models of a given actor. It shall change the balance of complex systems. Without the will or capacity to adapt the system to the real condition of natural systems and natural resources use, would they be limited or contaminating? Changes then take the form of shocks that manifest themselves when the deterioration of a resource becomes dramatic. That's the case, for example, in the environmental conflicts. 
Barry Commoner sustains in his book The Closing Circle, Nature, Man and Technology, published in 1971, that political ecology proposes necessary changes in production and consumption as the motor for changes in social relationship and lifestyle in a normatively desirable way. Another pioneer of ecological conversion of the economy, Andre Gortz, in his book Ecologica, calls for their introduction in the collective action of the norm of the sufficient, the norm of the enough, and it calls for the negation of consumerism as the motor of society. He said this could be done only retaking the full control over what to produce and how to produce it, that is to say the daily life culture. The ecological conversion of the economy essentially aimed to promote policies guaranteeing our children, grandchildren and future generations the same possibilities as our own. It implies real conversion policies based on long-term perspective on the contrary of current policies favoring the maximization of profits. Conversion should look at decreasing the use of energy and material because as Giorgio Nebbia, Italian economist, environmentalist and politician says, the material wealth of each generation is paid by the next generation who will have less materials and less nature available for their own life. So sobriety and liability in consumption and production are at the basis of hope for our planet and they are also the pillars of ecological conversion. The implicit objective of ecological conversion of the economy is to build a new economical paradigm directed at the reduction of man dependence on non-renewable resources on Earth and the reduction of the environmental impacts of productive and consumption activities, leaving behind the dominant consumption model. The critiques of superfluous and increasing human needs and the necessity for self-limitation are fundamental dimension of a radical critique to the dominant model driving the ecological conversion of the economy and productions. Ecological conversion of the economy brings fundamental attention to labor issues because consumerism considers work as a good and it alienates it from its original purposes. To say it in other words, in the dominant economic model, the goal of production is not the products that a given company puts on the market and its function in society that matters most, but the profit that its sales will guarantee. The same applies to labor. The goal of work is nothing more than the salary, when there is some, that the productive activity brings. Guaranteeing minimum wage independently from the duration of work and its redistribution among the population, that is to say, work less and provide work for all, is bind to an operation of cultural change, to a reappropriation of works, materials and handcrafted characteristics. Ecological conversion supports this perspective that promotes communitarian and cooperative self-production and exchange. If this perspective might seem marginal, it does strongly and realistically question the society of growth and unemployment and the society of exclusion and equality that we are living in. So we have seen many elements of uh, ecological conversion, the individual and collective dimension, the importance of collective actors and institutions, the regard to needs, production and products, and to the way we work, and all those elements uh, need to be rooted in a radical change of social, economical and political paradigm. Um, the vision of the transition we would need lies in the representation of the economical system as an open subsystem of the natural ecosystem, which is not unlimited, that is to say the environment, as you can see represented on the PowerPoint. So we need this vision rather than an isolated circular flow of abstract value and exchanges unrelated to mass balance, entropy and exhaustion. Barry Commoner remember us since that there is a deep link of interdependency between all elements of the ecosystem within a web of biological, social, economic, cultural and psychological relations. And it establishes a web of life that cannot be ignored by who is administrating a given territory. We hear talking every day more, in particular in Europe, about circular economy opposed to linear economy, as a system where all activities starting with extraction and production are organized in a way that waste produced by someone becomes a resource for someone else. But again, 
For the mainstream understanding of sustainable development of green economy, if this representation is limited to a purely technical adjustment, it risks to be insufficient. And as Commoner says, everything must go somewhere and there is no such thing as a free meal. The obvious mistake lies in the ignorance of the very entropic nature of the economy, and unfortunately, most of the time today we try to avoid the roots of the problem, forgetting that no recycling is for free and that there is no industry without waste. To remember Alex Lander thought, no ecological transition will ever work if it's not desired. And while the world is still dominated by the Olympic motus situs altius fortius, faster, higher and stronger, we would need a word that is more defined by lentius, profundius, suavius, slower, deeper and softer. We will now review in the second section of the lecture what are, in the perspective of Guido Viale, an Italian economist, the key elements for an ecological transition of the economy. The section of the lecture is built on the chapter I fattori chiave della riconversione ecologica dell'economia in the collective book Riconversione ecologica un'utopia concreta, Ecological Conversion, a Concrete Utopia, published by EDS in 2015 and edited by Assoud. Viale defines ecological conversion by differentiating it from green economy, and he defines green economy as the search for business opportunity and profits in sector allowing lower environmental impacts while maintaining business as usual. In his perspective, the green economy in its mainstream understanding is composed of random interventions. It invents in invest where there are more profits to make. He also specifies that even in case of public measures incenting sustainable action that would not be profitable otherwise, it's not given for granted that such incentives actually work because final decision depends on private initiatives and private investor evaluation differs from industrial policy makers. Hi everyone and welcome back for the fourth and last lecture of module one. Uh, we have already reviewed together the complex and interwin crises uh, we are facing, as well as the origin, the understanding, interpretations and application of the concept of sustainability. Now, we're going to go more into depth into sustainable transition theory and experiences. For Guido Viale, ecological conversion is a highly social and cultural perspective directed by social and environmental concerns and it consists in the participation of workers and active citizenship to the transformation of the production nets and consumption models. In Viale's words, the ecological conversion is a participative and conflictive process, defining a society model not as its final objective, but as a human condition in the present time and in the future, and though regarding at current and future generations. By participative, it implies that no such social transformation is possible without the participation of an active majority of citizens. And by conflictive, it implies that no radical alternative to the current state of the world is possible without challenging who is and who will be benefiting and making profit of current and future assets. Viale also differentiates and highlights the link between productive transition which is objective and structural, and ecological transition, which is more subjective and depends on a cultural revolution. When defining more precisely ecological conversion, Viale highlights the spiritual aspects of changes in our lifestyles, our consumption, our work practices contained in the word conversion. And behind the word ecological, he highlights the time-bounding limits of the environment. On one hand, the environment will survive our little human lives, while we might not survive its degradation. And on the other hand, we cannot, at least for long, consume or pollute more than our planet is able to reproduce or to regenerate. Viale explains very clearly how ecological conversion needs a double track. A structural transition of the productive system and individual change or conversion. A double track which needs to be activated through a double movement top-down and bottom-up. From top-down, it is needed to force governments at various levels to implement binding and different industrial policies, and from bottom-up, because such change could not occur without a large civil participation putting under pressure the bodies of governments. 
Another important element brought by Viale has to do with the necessity to increase local levels autonomy, activating a reshoring process of economic relations through direct relations between producers and consumers in a transparent framework allowing public control of transactions. For Viale, ecological conversion at systemic level can be summarized as follows. To pass from a world based on the concentration of power, big companies and states, to a system where power, plants, companies and activities are decentralized, differentiated, widespread and adapted to every territory and community characteristic, not in an isolated but in a connected way. A technical example of this would be, for example, the smart grid, so the development of renewable energy system based on the pro local production, consumption and exchange of a small amount of energy produced. As we have seen radical transition taking into account social and environmental equity, justice and sustainability is a very huge challenge, requiring many variables to become reality at global level. And as Rome was not built in a day, it is important to look at the good practice examples that show us the way, spread inspiration and hope in our long road towards change. In this part of the lecture, we will review various examples of bottom-up experiences, sometimes a mix of bottom-up, top-down experiences, going towards ecological conversion transition like legislative attempts, renewable energy communitarian cooperative, dismissed factories or abundant spaces regeneration. So we get to the question, who are the actors of change? So it would not be just the individuals, although if it's from some of them that changes occur. Actors of change shall be organizations, collective actors, starting with the institution. We can reduce uncertainties, which are typical of transition phases, and help to better define future scenarios of redefinition of costs, benefits, opportunities, and risks. We can say that institutionalized knowledge guides individual and collective behavior and builds sense to provide solution to complex issues. Institution represents the rules of a given society and relationship between people. In that sense, they can incentive change, would that be political, social or economical. Going towards ecological conversion cannot be limited to changing rules or value models of a given actor. It shall change the balance of complex systems. Without the will or capacity to adapt the system to the real condition of natural systems and natural resources used, would they be limited or contaminating? Changes then take the form of shocks that manifest themselves when the deterioration of a resource becomes dramatic. The main objective of the law proposal is to favor the development of social and ecological conversion of economic activities in a participative way. The regional law proposal wants to push for a transition of productive energy and consumption models that responds to environmental and social sustainability criteria. It aims to answer various critical local issues. We want to redress a contaminating industrial model to support the economical and sustainable development of company in an era characterized by economical and environmental crisis. It wants to promote not only an environmental but also social, cultural and education conversion. In order to maintain occupation and provide continuity to productive activities, the law proposal targets primarily small and medium enterprises or cooperatives with less than 250 employees that might be at risk of future crisis, but also workers from failing companies, cooperatives, social organizations and other entities that act for the protection of social and environmental sustainability. The law proposal look in particular at individual but also productive transition. The transformation of a productive cycle or a product is combined with a training process directed at company managers, workers, trade unionists and so on, so to guarantee they have the necessary tools to actuate a radical transition. The law proposals wants to bring closer different actors and in particular the productive world with the actors that know, lives and study the territory in which such activities are developed. So they can together identify and act 
for the development of strategy that answers the limits set by our planet and our local environment. Hi everyone and welcome back for the fourth and last lecture of module one. Uh, we have already reviewed together the complex and interwind crises uh, we are facing, as well as the origin, the understanding, interpretations and application of the concept of sustainability. Now we're going to go more into depth into sustainable transition theory and experiences. In order to avoid that the law remain too general and with no concrete impacts, it has been decided to center it around specific interventions. The law proposal includes measures like the renewal of production lines and plants, changes in the products and services so far provided by companies as well as their productive processes, the reduction of land use and of distance between production and consumption places, the change in the use of raw materials and fossil fuel energies as well as the increase of recycling and the reuse of material used, the revision of suppliers and buyers and the improvement and transparency of the information regarding distributed products and of the service offered, the improvement of work quality within and outside the company thanks to the training of worker competences on the transition process to actuate, the regeneration of degraded or abandoned space, would it be private or public, into a new productive activity or into services for citizens, and finally the establishment of measures, agreements, as well as management and logistic system to optimize the efficiency of resources used in order to limit access and waste in productive activities. So the law proposal also include a management model. At the core of the transition activity is the partnership agreement for social and ecological transition that allows beneficiaries and institutions, in this case the region and the cities, to plan improvement intervention through the coordination and integration of tool resources and capacity. A coordinating body run by the region, with the support of a technical committee composed of experts, will individuate and anticipate critical issues to be addressed. It will define priority geographical and economic areas and intervention strategies. It will set evaluation and monitoring criteria and run consultation with social, economic and institutional actors. Companies, cooperatives and workers, which are the beneficiaries uh, of the law, will be able to submit a request under the form of a provisional availability declaration for the development of a partnership agreement for the definition and proceeding of a conversion action. Once agreed and developed, a final partnership agreement is signed and it is expected to include its objective in terms of economic employment and local sustainability, its expected results through measurable transparent monitoring indicators, the intervention plan in terms of productive process, products and organizing structures changes. It also is supposed to include the tools made available by the local authorities to support the social and ecological transition process, as well as an evaluation of social, employment, environmental and other local impacts of the intervention. Social and green procurement, commercial tenders for research and development, eco-labels, funds for research and agreements with universities and research centers, ecological management interventions, microcredit funds, training programs to support changes in services, production and productive process, marketing, networking and communication towards a sustainable consumption and production, and granting of public assets and estate are among the tools that the region shall provide beneficiaries with and shall include in the partnership agreement. Moreover, the law foresees the establishment of an agreement monitoring system applying to the Italian Statistical Agency's indicator system developed in the project Benessere e Coe Sostenibile, Equal and Sustainable Welfare. The monitoring system should include evaluations of health, education, work, time, economic welfare, social relationships, politics, security, subjective welfare, landscape and culture, environment, service quality and research. 
In order to address the lack of deliberative participative spaces at local and national level in regards with local development, including productive policies and territorial management, the law also forces a system of non-binding consultation system, including companies, associations, trade unions and local institutions available to participate. This consultation process will be at the basis of the report on the productive, environmental and local crises weakness signs. The coordinating body of the region will develop the report with the support of their network of expert observers looking at the current mutation and the economic, sectorial and local trends in order to support the institutional intervention. The report will identify future issues in the productive employment and environmental spheres before they develop themselves into real crisis. Unfortunately, in the last two years, the regional authority still did not advance in the revision of the law, nor its vote for its implementation. Administrative instability and the lack of political will have stopped so far the law implementation. To review and vote the law proposal for its implementation would imply for the local administration to take on with a radical path, implying to build synergies between institution, civil society and the private sector, to redress an economic and social model in crisis toward justice, redistribution and environmental sustainability. So after this normative example, we will see two other uh, experiences that are example of dismissed factories in Italy that have been restructured and redirected to new activities from the bottom up. Um, these um, experiences inspire themselves from um, the Argentinian experience of dismissed factories that has been occupied by workers and uh, their activity restarted to develop local econ economy and maintain uh, the jobs of the workers that, were, uh, that lost their jobs because of the crisis. Um, similar also um, processes develop themselves uh, in the US where the workers actually buy out uh, a company or a plant, a factory, in order to maintain their own jobs. Um, we will review so now two examples from Italy. One is called Officine Zero in Rome and the other one is Rima Flau in Milan. Officine Zero, also called Officine Hot, is located close by the Tiburtina train station in a working class neighborhood that has seen the many urban social and employment transformations impoverishing inhabitants' quality of life. Officine Zero is a space and a project of productive regeneration. It is situated in a next train maintenance plant that has been abandoned in consequence of bankruptcy and it is currently occupied by those who want to create another type of production. It recalls the Argentinian experience of self-managed transition and production of dismissed factories and the American practice of workers' buyout that I introduced before. After the progressive closing of the productive activity in place, a social coalition composed of workers, students, artisans, unemployed and precarious workers to reopen the factory to regenerate it and open new employment perspective. The regeneration plan of Officine Zero is based on the adaptation of the plant's workers into a service of public utility, turn the plant into a center for reuse, recycling, repair and other craft works to be run by the cooperative. OZ wants to participate to the provision of mutual support and to raise awareness on the need to develop projects actually answering concretely and innovatively new issues arising from the transformation of the production, consumption and work processes. Hi everyone and welcome back for the fourth and last lecture of Module 1. Uh, we have already reviewed together the complex and interwin crises uh, we are facing, as well as the origin, the understanding, interpretations and application of the concept of sustainability. Now, we're going to go more into depth into sustainable transition theory and experiences. Officine Oz wants to experiment collaborative economy and horizontal decision making through the creation of a reuse center, also hosting a co-working space for autonomous workers from the social, design and communication sectors. The reuse sector is of high employment intensity and is compatible with a stable, local-based and sustainable economic model. 
The reuse center would meet the markets of used needs, a market widespread in Rome, in particular in its informal form. In Officineot's plan, the reuse center should also be the opportunity to provide those informal workers with better working and economic conditions. The project will also address the increasing opportunity of the online second-hand market, which trends seem to underline changes in consumption and habits. The productive activity behind O's is by its nature sustainable as it would allow to guarantee a longer or new life to products through reparation, recycling and reuse, limiting waste of resources, transport, as it will use local materials, and avoiding material to end up in landfills. So it is very complicated nowadays uh, to fund an ecological transition action that is developed from the bottom up. So let's see how Officineo is facing the issue of funding its ecological transition action. So first of all, the cooperative needed to buy the failing plants. So the cooperative asked itself what are the public financial tools available for such hybrid process of self-managed cooperative conversion of the factory. And they analyzed if the tools available were appropriate and sufficient. So they actually found out about the Marcora law, which is a law from 1984. Um, and this law forces the provision of special loans for actors that otherwise could not access the mainstream market of credit and, uh, and also be able to uh, fulfill the credit condition required by the market. Uh, this law also monitors the implementation of the workers' buyout system, so where the workers buy out the uh, failing company or plant, and it also supports the newly born cooperative through um, its administration council until the loan uh, is reimbursed. But if this law was actually thought to support company in crisis, it was not enough uh, and is not sufficient to face more systematic crises. Um, the loan system for which the credit um, could be accessed is equal to the cooperative social capital. And this is not really adequate in cases where relevant resources are needed or there is a radical transformation of the production. Um, in the case of Officine Oats, uh, they actually need a big initial um, amount of money in order to start their productive activity that then would be able to reimburse the loan and pay the workers. But this law does not allow them to access it because it would only give them half of uh, their cooperative social capital. So Officineos also looked at public fundings, but in Italy and probably in many of your countries, public resources are limited and there is often a high level of competition to access it. So though public support should be a universal opportunity available to an entire sector, such as ecological conversion, it is still very difficult to rely on public funds. So funding such activities should actually combine different types of fundings. And another possibility is the cooperative finance that can play an important role in that sense. So if we look at the overall sustainability of a conversion attempt from the bottom up, as it's the case of, of, of uh, Officine Oats, it is interesting to see how, in their case, they have engaged many more social resources from the outside, from university, from research centers, from social organization, professional and other cooperatives in order to develop a credible and strong industrial conversion plan. Public utility is also a fundamental element in particular to get the support from local authorities. It highlights the purpose of the project, which is a strong basis to build funding strategies. Though projects are rich of social capital, good ideas and organizational capacity, they shall be based on sustainable economic activities and they also need initial capital to start. Among the characteristics of Officineot's public utility, we can quote the social innovation, because Officineot wants to experiment resilience models able to create opportunities uh, to get out of the crisis and that can be reproduced uh, elsewhere. We can also quote the environment, because the project forces less contaminating products and production and transport processes, and it will contribute to integrated waste management and reduce the amount of non-recyclable waste. 
It tends to energy efficiency and ecological footprint reduction, while raising awareness regarding the importance of the environment and the dissemination of good practices in the field of social and ecological transitions. And finally, it provides job of Itineos wants to guarantee and create new jobs opportunity while working on the integration of the less advantaged and the professionalization of informal economies. It offers co-working spaces and opportunities as well as it reinforces social cohesion through the dissemination of collaborative practices, rewarding work perspective and the reduction of illegality and social marginality. Officine Zero, also called Officine Ot, is located close by the Tiburtina train station in a working class neighborhood that has seen the many urban social and employment transformations impoverishing inhabitants' quality of life. Officine Zero is a space and a project of productive regeneration. It is situated in an ex train maintenance plant that has been abandoned in consequence of bankruptcy and it is currently occupied by those who want to create another type of production. It recalls the Argentinian experience of self-managed transition and production of dismissed factories and the American practice of workers' buyout that I introduced before. After the progressive closing of the productive activity in place, a social coalition composed of workers, students, artisans, unemployed and precarious workers to reopen the factory to regenerate it and open new employment perspective. The regeneration plan of Officine Zero is based on the adaptation of the plant's workers into a service of public utility, turn the plant into a center for reuse, recycling, repair and other craft works to be run by the cooperative. OZ wants to participate to the provision of mutual support and to raise awareness on the need to develop projects actually answering concretely and innovatively new issues arising from the transformation of the production, consumption and work processes. Hi everyone and welcome back for the fourth and last lecture of Module 1. Uh, we have already reviewed together the complex and interwin crises uh, we are facing, as well as the origin, the understanding, interpretations and application of the concept of sustainability. Now we're going to go more into depth into sustainable transition theory and experiences. But also many more active citizenship activities are organized by RIMAFLOW and their association that actually um, cross this space. They organize courses, social cultural events, second-hand uh, market, uh, artisans and artists workshops. It also hosts the hostel for refugees and homeless people. RIMAFLOW supports also other experiences, like for example, fuori mercato, which means out of the market, organizing logistics support for some ethical purchasing group looking for distribution channels in Milan, so to promote critical consumption and food sovereignty. But the road to self-management is difficult. In three years, people's work and energy is the only capital invested in the project, and it allows recuperating and maintaining the productive spaces. There is no certainty regarding the future success or failure of the RIMAFLOW experience. What is for sure is that such projects are needed and need to be more supported. Regeneration of dismissed factories are a pragmatic solution to productive and environmental crises as they can maintain local self-determinated jobs. So we have reviewed already two types uh, of experimentation regarding ecological conversion, one regarding the normative sector, why one, two actually regarding the regeneration of dismiss factories. We will now review a very uh, inspiring example of collaboration between uh, civil society and local authority in trying to build conversion changes in a small town life. So Melpignano is a small town of, ab of about 2,000 inhabitants, situated in South Italy, in the Salento area. 
this municipality has been the practice field of an interesting experiment that is um, the experimentation of a model of community cooperative. The initial project was based on a triple synergy between the city of Melpignano, the National Association of Italian Authentic Villages and Legacop, which is among the biggest and oldest Italian cooperatives. Um, the area where Merpignano is situated is among the most sunny areas in Europe and it is also quite impacted by the wild development of photovoltaic power plants on traditional agrarian land. In order to address this issue, while making the most of the solar potential of the area, they come up with the idea to develop solar energy but on the roofs of their houses. So to preserve rural land, produce renewable energy and support local, lo local economy and well-being at the same time. So the community, co the community cooperative, built after six months of public assemblies, is composed of all Mepignano's inhabitants who are interested and invest a small support quote of, two, uh, of 25 euros, so basically nothing. Then the cooperative... Um, became an entity through which to develop small photovoltaic solar panel plants on citizens' roofs. The cooperative, in agreement with the ethical bank, uh, Italian ethical bank called Banca Etica, who facilitated a favorable loan, supported the costs and organization of the solar plants. So all the manpower was local. Um, it involved five engineers, seven electricians and two blacksmiths uh, to install about 200 kilowatt uh, per hour. In total, 30, uh, 34 photovoltaic plants, of which 29 are, are managed and owned by the cooperative when installed, and other five sold to cooperatives members. Um, not only this increased the environmental, uh, it, this increased the environmental burden of energy uh, consumption and production, but the energy produced and not consume, produced an economical income for the cooperative that allowed to reimburse the bank loan, but also invest in further activities for the community. Uh, to illustrate better this example, I invite you now uh, to click on the image you have on this slide to view the video case studies uh, about the Melpignano experience. So after this first solar experiment, the cooperative decided to invest on a new project, the water houses, offering at only 5 cents per liter microfiltered cold water, natural or sparkling. In 2013 and 2014, 6.4 million liters have been sold, avoiding the use of, third, of 3 million plastic bottles equivalent to uh, 90,000 kilo of CO2. You can see on the map on this slide uh, and access the places where all these uh, water houses have been installed. Uh, but this uh, second experience also reinforced uh, virtuous local economy because it involved 37 municipalities in the area and 20 professionals among electricians, blacksmiths and plumbers. 27 water houses have been created in the region and more and other 16 are actually under development. From the 2014 income, 10,000 euro has been directed to school books and 10,000 euros has been destined for the preschool canteen so that the less advantaged families can receive complementary support to cover all their school books and uh, preschool canteen costs. Uh, this is a very interesting um, experimentation to complete the first one and the municipality of Melpinano and the cooperative are still uh, planning on further developing this model to new activities. So that's it for module one. I hope that you enjoyed uh, these first lectures and that it gives you little inspiration and motivation to go further with the course and also to invest your own person into the big challenge of ecological conversion.